Am I turning into a flood? Welcome back everybody. My name's Will and today I'm gonna give you my final review on the Kraft Holsters Leather Belt Holster. Now before we get into the review, full disclosure, Kraft did send me this holster. They sent it a while back actually. So I've had this for over a year, maybe even two years now, I can't remember. Um, but they also sent me the other items I held up earlier, which we'll get into here in a bit. They didn't pay me for this review. I didn't pay them for the items. They just sent them out for me to use, to test, and do a video on for you guys. So I wanna say thank you to them, and I want you to know that I'm gonna to be totally honest in this video, uh, despite the fact that they sent me free stuff. It's really important to me that you guys know uh, that I'm being upfront and honest with you. If I find something good about a product, you're gonna know about it. If I find something bad about a product, you're gonna know about it. And that doesn't matter if I paid for it, if they sent it to me for free, whatever. So. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the fun stuff. Sorry to interrupt the video guys, but I need you to do me a favor. Recently, several companies have come on board with Country Boy Guns and uh, have, have taken me on as an affiliate with them. Uh, what that means is if you use my links to go shop on their websites and you buy something, I get a portion of that sale to come back to the channel. That lets me buy ammo, buy accessories, buy guns, uh, buy gas for range trips, buy camera equipment, pay for trips that I have upcoming, which I do have at least one really cool trip coming up this year that I'm really excited about. Uh, all of those funds that come back to me support the channel. They support me. They support the work and the content that I'm making here. So if you'd like to support this channel, the best way for you to do that is to use the first link in my description down below, which will take you to my brand new website. On my website, I'll have a list of all of the companies that I have affiliate links with. If you just click on that company name, it'll take you straight to their website using my affiliate link. And from there, like I said, whatever you buy or whatever memberships you sign up for, I do get a portion of that uh, that comes back to help with Country Boy Guns. So if you don't mind, please do me a favor, go check out my website. It'll be the top link in the description below. Again, any of those companies you wanna shop from, Go over there, see if they've got something you want, and use my links to shop with those companies. I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Now let's get back to the video. So like I said, I've had this holster for a long time. I've actually already done a first thoughts or initial impressions video on it uh, a good while back. I'll link that here at the top for you guys to see uh, if you want to go check that out. But uh, I've had some more time to play with it. And just so happens that while I was on deployment, uh, they reached out to me and said that they wanted to send me a leather belt and a leather speed loader pouch that all matched with the holster that I already had. So I thought that was really cool. Now I've got a, a complete set. Now, I think it's important to talk about what I would actually go out and buy these items for, as in what use case would I have for a nice looking leather holster with a matching nice looking leather speed loader pouch and a matching nice leather belt. To me, this kind of stuff is what Texans, or at least what I've been told Texans would call a barbecue gun rig. Uh, in other words, it looks nice. It's got a very nice sheen to it. It's uh, very soft, smooth leather on the outside. It just, it looks really good. You put on a nice pair of pants and a buttoned up shirt, tuck your shirt in, maybe even a bolo tie or something, I don't know. It would go really, really well with that kind of outfit. You know, you could color coordinate your shoes and, all that crap, I don't know, I don't do that. I'm a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy. But I could definitely see this being uh, something, you know, for a nice occasion. You wanna dress up, you're gonna go be around people that, you know, they know you carry a gun, maybe they also carry guns, maybe open carry is legal where you are, uh, you know, whatever it is, but you're going to a nicer event. You wanna dress up, but you still wanna carry your gun. That's where I see this setup, this gear really shine. Now I've said this before and I'll say it again, I'm not a big leather guy. It's just not my thing typically. Uh, however, I do understand and respect the value of a good holster no matter what it's made out of and leather holsters have been used for centuries so they absolutely will get the job done. Let's talk about the construction a little bit and then we'll move into what I did to test this stuff out which might surprise you a little bit. So I already talked about the leather, how it's nice and smooth on the outside, very well polished. 
The edges are nice. I don't know what they do here, frankly, but they're nice and even. They meet up well. You can barely tell that there's a seam between the two pieces of leather on the holster. Um, the inside is the rough side of the leather, but that's okay because that actually, I think, provides a little bit more friction and tension to hold the pistol into the holster, especially since this holster doesn't have any kind of loop or thumb break or anything to it. Um, the stitching is really, really well done. Uh, you can you can just see, you know, big thick thread. It's double stitched in a lot of places. So overall, the quality of the construction of the holster is great. Moving on to the speed loader pouch, it's pretty much the same. Those nice edges that meet up very well, the really good stitching that's double stitched in some places, um, the strap itself as well as the bottom piece of leather to retain the bottom of your, your rounds in your speed loader is riveted in in the back. So it's not going anywhere unless you really rip on it. The one quality ding that I will give this speed loader pouch is, and it's a very minor thing, the button, which actually has the Falco logo on the front because Falco does make some products for craft. The button for the snap is actually a little off center on the leather. Um, it's barely noticeable unless you really look at it, but it's there and I could tell, and I don't know, it's just one of those cosmetic things that kind of takes away a little bit from the overall appearance, but it's still completely functional. Um, the other thing that I noticed as I would wear this a lot is that it would move side to side on me. I'll show you guys. So this, because it's only got one single rivet here in the back, it would just move a lot side to side. Again, not an issue. It would still absolutely retain your speed loader. It's not gonna come out if you've got rounds in it, but just something that I would notice and because I have this weird, it's not OCD, but it's what most people call OCD. I want it to be centered up all the time, so I'm constantly fiddling with it. And now the belt. The belt is a pretty standard leather gun belt uh, in terms of you know how it's constructed, how it looks. It's got the normal adjustment holes like a standard traditional belt does. Um, it's got really that same really good stitching all the way around. Uh, I really like the buckle. It's super simple. It's nothing crazy. But I mean, this buckle just looks fantastic to me. Um, it's, it's a simple design, but it's a kind of a brushed nickel appearance to it. It just, it makes it look really nice, I think. Something else I thought was really cool, I don't know if this is a standard thing or not, I'll take a look at their website. If it is, I'll annotate it here on the screen. But they did put my initials on both the holster and the belt. So my channel initials, CBG, did get gold embossed on both of those items. And I thought, like I said, that's a really cool touch. I mean, that's nice. That was the first thing I noticed when I took these things out of the boxes. And I don't know, it just, it's a nice special little touch. So growing up in Alabama uh, as a kid, I had a family member that went to a lot of arts and crafts shows. And so I tagged along to a bunch of those. There were several in the area that we lived in. And uh, I was like every year, one of the things that I would get is a brand new leather belt with my name stamped into the back of it. That at least again, at that time period in the nineties uh, as a kid in the South, it was a pretty common thing for everybody to wear a leather belt with their name stamped in the back of it. Um, so the initials being embossed on the belt is also kind of a little bit of a throwback to my childhood for me. So I really appreciated that as well. Let me be honest with you guys. I actually kind of had a hard time figuring out if I wanted to review these separately or together in one video like I'm doing. Frankly, I'm doing it all in one video. Uh, for several reasons, but one, I used all of this stuff together. So it makes sense to me to review it as a system rather than individual components. So I've talked to you about the construction, but how does this stuff actually work day to day? So when I was wearing this stuff, carrying it every day to test it out for you guys, I wore the belt, the holster, and the speed loader pouch, and obviously with the gun in it. This is my Colt Detective Special 2-inch. This is an older gun. You guys have seen it before on the channel a few times. Um, that's the, the gun that fits in this holster. And when Kraft reached out to me 
to ask me if I wanted to review some of their products, I thought that a nice leather holster would be a perfect companion for this gun. This was my great grandfather's gun. It's a, a family heirloom, I inherited it. So I want something kind of nice to go with it, especially since I'm not gonna carry it very often. But I was carrying it. And because I'm not a huge wheel gun guy, I do like them, they're cool. I just don't typically carry them for self-defense. And because it also went well with the review, I also would carry my Glock 19 and two or three spare magazines with the same belt, putting way more weight on it to test it out. And frankly, I found that this leather belt is not quite stiff and sturdy enough for that much weight. No surprise there, nothing groundbreaking or, or super shocking. Uh, it worked, it, it didn't give me any huge issues. It just wasn't super comfortable. The pistol, the, the Glock uh, carried appendix would kind of push out from my body a little bit more than I liked. The magazines would fall away from my body a little bit more than I liked. By comparison, Core Essentials, which I did a review on their belts recently, their nylon belt is rated for up to eight pounds. Their, at least their nylon EDC belt. Their leather EDC belt is rated for up to four pounds. Now, this isn't a super heavy gun, but it's a steel, you know, six shot snub nose revolver with extra ammo. And then I add a loaded Glock 19 with a flashlight on it and a you know, two, two to three more magazines of ammo. I'm, I'm kind of exceeding what you really should expect out of a, a belt like this with this test, but I did it for you guys. When I carried with just the revolver and the speed loader pouch, it was beautiful. It was perfect. It, I, I forgot I was wearing this thing. You know, if I came home from running to the store and I took my Glock off, I took my uh, pistol mag pouches off, I tightened the belt up one notch and just wore this and the speed loader around the house, I forgot I had it on. I kept thinking that, you know, oh crap, I don't have my gun on me as I'm walking around there. Oh wait, no, I do have a gun. Um, even though again, not a super light gun, it just kind of disappeared. And that's because of the way that the holster is made, that pancake style with the wings on it really hugs it into your body well. And uh, the same goes for the speed loader pouch just hugs in really nicely and the belt was absolutely strong enough to hold that stuff up. Now, if you wanted to carry an all steel 1911 in this same style of holster with maybe a couple of magazines and a leather magazine pouch on the other side, I do think this belt would absolutely hold up to that, no problem, but I haven't tested it. So what did I test? So I wanted to test the retention of the holster, uh, especially because there's no thumb brake or anything like that. There's nothing but gravity and friction keeping the gun in the holster. So I thought, well, I want to test it, but I don't want the gun to break if it does fall out. So I didn't want to go for like a run or anything like that with it. So how did I test it? So I started by doing over a minute's worth of jumping jacks. Now I'm not going to show you the whole minute because frankly, that's kind of boring, but I did a minute, minute and a half, somewhere in there of jumping jacks. Um, and the gun didn't budge. It didn't move around on, the holster didn't move on the belt. The gun didn't start to come out. It didn't come out of the holster at all. Uh, the gun was unloaded during this, so it was a little bit lighter than it would be if I was carrying it, but I did that for safety reasons, just in case it came out of the holster and no issues. And after doing a minute or so worth of jumping jacks, I decided to do some headstands. I learned how to do headstands a few years ago. Um, it requires a lot of balance, but if you're on a nice flat, hard floor or maybe carpet, it's pretty easy to do. I did it on an old mattress that we have because again, if the gun fell out, I didn't want you know maybe the hammer to hit the floor and break or damage the wood grips or something. So I did it on a mattress. Headstands are a lot harder to do on something super cushiony like a mattress. But I did it anyway, did it a few times, and again, the gun never moved. Didn't come out of the holster at all, no issues whatsoever. Now again, going back to what I said earlier on how I would use this, uh, if I'm going to a nice event, I'm wearing dressy clothes, I'm not going somewhere where I'm likely to do a lot of physical activity. Now, of course, that's always possible, right? Feces occur 
if you're carrying a gun, then you're carrying it because you know there is at least the possibility of some sort of dangerous altercation where you want to be able to protect yourself, your family, your friends, and those around you, right? And if you do find yourself in some sort of tussle or fight uh, where you're running, you're, you end up on the ground, you're getting pushed around, whatever may be happening when you're in your nice clothes wearing your nice leather um, EDC setup, you do want to at least know that that gun is probably going to stay with you. Of course, anything can happen and the gun could come flying out in an appendix holster. Um, it can happen, but I wanted to test it at least a little bit, but I didn't feel the need for a huge, crazy amount of testing because this is not a duty carry setup. This is, at least in my mind, a nice dressy event EDC setup. Now, I also did take this out to the range and get a few reps in with it. Ammo being what it is lately, don't have a ton of 38 special to shoot through it, so I didn't get a, a ton of rounds. I probably got nine or so cylinders worth of, uh, of shooting, but I did practice using a timer, drawing and firing at a quarter size IPSC target. Just show you guys a little bit of that footage here so you can see kind of how some of that went. for today. Let's see if I can get this under five seconds. Six hits. Woo! 496, baby. I don't know how well you can see that. Under five seconds. All right. So if all you need is six shots or less, or five shots with the J-frame. You can do it. And again, I'm about 10 yards away from that quarter rib six size plate and got all six hits. If it wasn't great, I could probably be faster with a Glock, but hey, still works. So as you can see, the gear works fine. I did fumble some of the draws. I'm not as used to drawing from like the four o'clock position. I'm more used to either appendix or a drop leg setup, uh, but that was on me, not on the holster. Same thing, kind of, with the speed loader pouch. Getting the flap off and getting the speed loader out is relatively easy to do. I mean, it's not as fast as a standard open top magazine pouch that I'm used to, but again, this is a revolver. Older technology, you gotta deal with that. And as you'll see here, all right, let's try getting a reload out of this uh, speed loader pouch this time. Get your hits. And this is where semi-autos beat revolvers all day long unless you're Jerry Mitchell. Like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, not a fan of these speed loader things. Speed loaders suck. That was atrocious. Now, to be totally fair, I'm not super great with this. I don't have a ton of practice with it. And uh, this actually is not the correct speed loader for this revolver. Uh, they do make a model that is designed perfectly to work with this revolver. However, even if I had that one, the grips would still get in the way. There's a nice little bulge. <laughs> coming out the side and that would get in the way of actually you know putting the rounds into the cylinder but because this is a family gun I don't want to change the grips on it I want to leave it just like it is uh, out of sentimental value quite frankly so 
I'm not going to change the grips, which means I don't actually need to worry about finding just the right speed loader. So yeah, all the issues I had uh, on the range were my fault. They were because I haven't trained a ton with this kind of gear. I haven't trained very much at all with revolvers or speed loaders. And yeah, that's on me. That's not on the equipment. All right. So we've been talking a lot, showing you a lot of stuff, but what most of you actually care about is what I buy this stuff. And I'm gonna walk you through individually yes or no if I would buy them. And I'm gonna give you an answer for each item individually and I'm gonna caveat it. If I say yes, it is based on the assumption that I'm looking for a nice dressy setup. I'm looking for something to look nice as well as be functional. Um, if I were just gonna buy what I would carry every day normally, frankly, no, I wouldn't buy leather. But that being said, I really like having a nice setup to carry a gun and still look a little classy. Uh, and I really appreciate that piece of it. So let me tell you on each of these three items, whether or not I would buy them. Would I buy the holster? Absolutely. Again, if I'm looking for something nice and fancy looking, maybe I have two or three or five suits and several shirts and ties and a few different pairs of shoes, I would probably buy one of these in each color uh, just to have the color coordinating options. Um, it's not a holster I would consider high activity, but it's held up really well for me. It holds onto the gun really well. Um, and if I were a common wearer of nicer apparel, then yes, I would, I would absolutely have a few of these for each of the guns that I would carry when I'm dressy or when I'm dressed nicely. What about the speed loader pouch? Would I buy this? Again, yes, I would. Same conversation applies. Make sure that I have ones to color coordinate and whatever. Uh, I will say I haven't tested their standard box magazine pouches like for a 1911 or a Glock or anything like that. Uh, so I can't give you my opinion on those, but this thing worked very well for me in terms of what it's supposed to do. Now it didn't make me load the gun any faster, but that's my fault, like I said earlier. Um, I think it looks nice. It does bulge out a little, so to speak, bulge out a little bit more. So under a, a suit coat or something, you'd never notice it. Under a t-shirt, it was a little bit more noticeable. The holster actually holds the gun tightly to you and conceals it better than the speed loader pouch does. But I mean, we're talking about something that's that big around. Like you're sticking that on your belt and it's gonna push out from your body. It's kind of difficult to make something that's going to hide that super well. And this does a good job. It's got that same pancake design. Uh, I, I would buy this if I was in the market for a speed loader pouch that was leather for a nice dressy setup. What about the belt? Would I buy the belt? Maybe. Now I say maybe because it did its job. It absolutely held what it was supposed to hold. Um, when I carried just the revolver and the speed loader, they, they go together very nicely. They look great together. Uh, it held the weight just fine. It, these things disappeared. I forgot I was carrying them. But if I put anything more than that on the belt, it, it just didn't hold up as well to the weight as I expected. And, and frankly, I did expect it to be stiffer and sturdier because the holster is very stiff. It's very rigid, um, but still also comfortable. And the speed loader pouch is the same way. So with those two items, and like I said, I had the holster for a long time before I got the belt and the speed loader pouch. Um, I just, I had a different expectation of the belt than what it gave me. And I can actually make it collapse just a little bit by squeezing it. Um, this, this set a pretty high bar for craft and the belt was the only thing that didn't quite meet those expectations. Uh, so if I had one piece of constructive criticism for craft, it would be to make the belts stiffer and sturdier. 
Um, even if it takes them longer to break in when you start wearing them, you know, they're maybe they're a little more uncomfortable at first and you get more hot spots on your waistline at first. Um, I would rather take that and, and have the break in period for the leather than to have a belt that's super comfortable right out of the box, but doesn't hold up as well to, uh, to weight and it just is, is more rigid than I would like it to, or less rigid than I would like it to be. Other than that, uh, like I said, I'm honest with you guys, right? Like I'm gonna tell you what I think about stuff. I really wanna say again that I appreciate Kraft sending these items out for me to review and um, I, I see it as my job to be honest with my audience, but also be honest with manuf manufacturers, right? Like that's part of why reviewers exist and why companies send stuff to reviewers, um, at least the good companies. They take the constructive criticism and they use that feedback to make their product better. And that's all I want from any company. So this is just for craft. Keep doing this, keep doing this also, make sure you pay attention to the centering of your buttons, but otherwise keep making this the same way and make the belts more rigid. That's, that's really the only feedback I have. Otherwise, all the products were great and I really enjoyed them. And I'm gonna keep using these items, especially if I do need to dress up and go somewhere where I look a little nicer. I will be using these items more. Uh, I'm really happy to have them as accessories in my wardrobe so that I can you know, mix and match and I can dress to whatever occasion it is that uh, I need to dress for. So there you have it guys. Leather's not my favorite for any kind of gear. That being said, if I had to use a leather setup or if I was looking for a leather setup for a specific look or a specific function, then these craft holsters and their accessories are a good option for you. Uh, one more thing I will tell you because some people will care about this is that these items are made in Europe. They're not made in America. Uh, doesn't bother me. Personally, as long as I know and the company is upfront and honest about where their stuff is made, then that doesn't bother me. Uh, but your mileage may vary. Just wanted to point that out. These things are very, very awesome. And I'm really happy that I had this set up. That's all I got for you guys today. I really appreciate y'all taking the time to watch. If you liked the video, do me a favor, hit that like button down below. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, it really does help out. Also, if you guys have any questions about anything in today's video, please put them in the comments down below. That also helps out with the algorithm. And I love having conversations with you guys down in the comments. Um, it's always a lot of fun and I end up learning stuff too. So if you'd rather, you can send me an email or a DM on Instagram. I'll have that linked in the description as well as right here on the screen for y'all. And don't forget to go check out my website, take a look. And uh, if you use my links, it does help the channel and I really do appreciate that support. Thanks again for watching everybody. Y'all take it easy, roll tide, and I'll see you later.